Last week I introduced you to the idea contained in a quote that people tend to take too many precautions. <clears throat> Today I will show you how my life, both professional and personal, changed when I chose to take a chance. Please remember the quote is as follows. The chief danger in life is that you take too many precautions by Alfred Adler, Austrian psychiatrist. When treating patients, <clears throat> he often heard lots of concern about taking chances. He advised them to think what they would or could be missing out on if they never took a chance. My life is a good example of what taking a chance can lead to. When I graduated from UC Berkeley as an electrical engineer, I was designing electronic equipment using vacuum tubes. One day my supervisor told me the company had decided to develop a new set of modules using transistors. Would I like to participate? I said, of course, thank you. On my way home from work, I stopped at a bookstore and I bought a book called Transistor Circuit Design by Shea and I became a transistor design engineer. However, I had to work hard to really, really learn to be a good transistor design engineer. Several years later, I was working at Philco Ford in Palo Alto and my boss asked me into his office. He introduced me to Kazu Oshima, a highly regarded system designer. They told me the company was supporting the government on a project regarding a satellite. Unfortunately, the command link was not operating properly, and they had decided that the best way to determine what the problem was was to simulate the command link and test things. They asked if I could design a system to simulate the link. I said, of course. On my way home, I bought a book. <laughs> it was called Information, Transmission, Modulation, and Noise by Misha Schwartz. I became a system design engineer because I took a chance and did a lot of work. Once again, years later, I was heading a design group tasked with developing a special receiver to test and verify the performance of the future GPS satellites. After considering the requirements, my group and I decided the only way to accomplish the design was to design to develop our own IC chips. After reviewing the design requirements and the equipment necessary to accomplish the chip designs, we decided that we needed to buy a special computer, which was going to cost $100,000 which our budget could not accommodate. We had a meeting with my department manager, the company chief engineer, the company vice president, and another department manager who thought we were crazy. After an exciting, noisy meeting, I was able to convince everyone and we got the money. Because I took a chance, we got $100,000, 
and we developed an integrated circuit design group. After Sylvia, my first wife, died, I was a mess. We had been married 27 wonderful years. During those years, we had developed a very close relationship with another couple named Joe and Jerry Probella. For 12 of those 27 years, Sylvia and Jerry had been best friends. Our families did everything together. We visited each other many, many times per year. We went to Camp Mather together for two weeks every year. <clears throat> and they had decided, oops, got the wrong one. <laughs> About six months after my Sylvia died, I had decided to take a two-week vacation. I was visiting some friends in Aptos, <clears throat> and I got a phone call telling me that Joe had been hit by a car, and it did not look good. I left. I decided Jerry was going to need lots of help. My kids were all in college or high school, and they could take care of themselves. I stayed with Jerry for about 10 days, helping her in every way possible. At the end of that time, I was no longer seeing Jerry as a married woman. I was seeing an amazing widow named Jerry, and I decided I was going to marry her. Of course, I did not tell her that. I just never went away. I kept visiting her every weekend, if possible, and I would get both families together on outings, anywhere possible, picnics, Rowing, museums, Golden V Park, you name it, we did it. Every once in a while, I would ask Sherry, have you thought about what you're going to do with your life? I always got the same answer. I'm going to join the Peace Corps. I knew this would never work. An ant, a spider, a cockroach, anything would drive her crazy. I didn't know what to do. One day we were working in her backyard in a vegetable garden that Joe had started. I raised the same question again. What are you going to do with your life? The same answer. I'm going to join the Peace Corps. Enough. Enough. I couldn't take it anymore. I turned to her and said, no, you're not. You're going to marry me, and we are going to be very happy. <laughs> she stared at me like I was a madman, but I think this got her thinking, because a short time later, she said, yes. Since together we had eight children, four boys and four girls, they were all in the wedding. We had 37 wonderful years because I took a chance. Thank you.